I know, you got to like that. It's very specific. Large. But it sounds a lot like central limit theorem, doesn't it? I mean, the, the larger it gets, the more normal it gets. Well, we do get a little more specific with that, but um, large is undefined here because it has to be. So I love that my explanation of why that's vague is itself vague. Now, large itself is undefined. The larger, notice at the very bottom where it says large, do any of those numbers look familiar? 1.96, 1.645, 2.576 is almost 2.575. It's just a little more exact, to be honest. Don't those look like z scores? So, if the whole purpose of this is to cover my ass because I don't know the real standard deviation of the population. When my sample gets really freaking big, isn't that basically going to be close enough? The smaller my sample is, the more possibility there is that my standard deviation is way far away from what the real one is. The larger my sample gets, the more likely it is getting really close to the real one. So that's what this says. When it gets really large sample size, then I can just go ahead and use z-scores. That's really what that says. So the bottom, if you want to write in there instead of large, put z-scores. And then we'll notice this t-chart is a really good place to come and look at z-scores because they live at the bottom. If I stop, I get a t-score. If I go all the way down, I get a z-score. So let's see how this works. If I had a sample of 12 and I want... Um, a 98% confidence interval, what would that t-score have to be to use? What do I have to figure out first? Do I just go here? 12. Yay! This column, of course, is degrees of freedom. So what's my degrees of freedom now? 11. Yeah, so it's just degrees of freedom is 12 minus 1, 11. Where is 98% confidence? Which column is 98% confidence? So look how this is set up. This is actually set up really nicely for chapter eight. Right now, I gotta kind of get used to how this says. If I want a 98% confidence interval, how much is in the two tails? Two percent, right? How much is in one tail? And do you see how both of those are the same? Thank God. This column is described by two percent and two tails, or one percent and one tail. So you can't go wrong. So if I want a 98% confidence interval, I go to the one that's got 2% and two tails. So if I have a degree of freedom of 11, I want 98% confidence, so I go here. So what I would use 2.718, which is a lot bigger than the z-score I would use. Because again, if I don't know the real standard deviation, I've got to make it a little bigger to cover my ass for not knowing that. So t here would have to be I forgot to write 2.718. Now, the background of all of this, before I use a Z or a T, what's got to be true? It's got to be normal distribution. My N's not big enough, so in this problem, I would have to somewhere tell you that it's normal. Right? So it's just like before. If you don't know it's normal, you can't do a damn thing. So for some reason, students start to think, if it's not normal, I can use T scores. No. It has to be normal for either one. So if n is bigger than 30, you're good to go. You can use either one. If it isn't, they have to tell you somewhere, just like before. Yeah. I don't understand what you meant by the area tails. Oh, so if I want a 98% confidence interval, how much is outside? 2%. 2%. There you go, 2% in the tails, right? Cool. So what if I want, to, let's say, so these are all normal. So here, let me give you a couple more situations. You guys figure out these t-scores. Um,
So assuming these are, well, these all three of these don't matter. N is big enough. But assuming I need a T score for these situations, what's the T score in each situation? Good. Should I use five here or five here or? Either way, 10% and two tails or 5% and one tail. Either way you do it, you're in the same column. actually looking for him? What do I have to do first? Good. Degrees of freedom is 36. 90% confidence would be alpha would be what? Good. 0 0.10. So you think that's then two tails. Alpha over two would be one tail. Either way you look at it, 10% two tails, 5% one tail is going to be this column here. Right? And I want degrees of freedom is 36. So right there, 1.688. Is that cool? And then you would throw that into the same place you would the z-score in the confidence interval formula. It's not that big of a tweak. Every single tweak we've done has actually been minor. There's been a lot of backstory to it. So this t-score would be 1. I forgot already. 688. Okay. So what about n equal 91? Degrees of freedom is 90. So 90, way down here. 80% confidence interval, there's alpha would be 20%. So 20% in two tails, this last column, 1.291. So that's the T-score I would use. 1.291. And finally, a really good question is, what do you get when you get way the hell up here? You notice how little they're changing. How much are they changing here? Here they were stepping by one, and they were changing by a lot. And now they're stepping by five, and now they're stepping by 10, and now they're stepping by 100, because they're not changing by much. Whenever you have one that's in the middle, you'll always go to be more conservative, you round down. So technically, the degrees of freedom here would be what? 107. Our chart's not that specific, so we go to 100. Now, if it was, if it, I went to what? I did go to one and play it safe. Why is that more conservative? Because it makes my T-score bigger. It makes my interval bigger. That's being more conservative. Now, if N was 198, I'd probably just go to 200. But you can always round down just to be safe, right? You guys with me? Okay. Um, so I know it's 100. 95% uh, confidence would be 0 0.05 and two tails. So I want this middle column. 0.05 and two tails. 100, so it would be 1.984. 1.984. Yes, sir? When would you want us to round up and down? So if it's like 150 round down, or 150 down? Always round down. Let me just say that. Okay, I was saying if it was 199, I could understand if somebody just went ahead to 200. That wouldn't be that big of a deal. But you can always round down just to cover yourself. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, and, and so an actual problem, yeah. I could only use the t-score for a confidence interval if it was normal. In fact, I can only use a z or a t if it's normal. So that's number one. Step one for z or t is is normal. How do I know when to use a z-score? When I know the population standard deviation. So I have to use a t-score when I don't know that, when I only have the sample standard deviation. I have to use a t-score. But for both of them, you have to have a normal distribution. Let's try a problem out real quick. And, and so just to warn you, 7.4 can do something that the other ones could not do. 7.4 can give you a list of data and then ask you to calculate your own sample mean and sample standard deviation. How do you do that very quickly? Calculate. You put into list one, and what is it that you use? One bar, one bar stats, right? You stat, calc, one bar stats. It'll tell you the X bar, it'll tell you the S. I'm not gonna make you do it all by hand now that we're out of chapter three. Um, so problem could look like this. problem. What's missing that isn't really missing that I need to know before I can do all this stuff? Yeah, I don't say it's normal, but yeah, my sample size is big enough, right? So is it normal? Yes. Check. And greater than 30. Central limit. So two, sigma or S, which one do I know? Yeah, how do I know it's S? Now be really careful. Some of the homework problem is going to say S there. That's being way too nice. So appreciate it when you see that. Otherwise, you've got to realize, where the hell did that come from? Where did that 5.09 come from? It's a sample of 81. So don't say, I always have somebody say, well, I know the standard deviation, so I can use these scores. No. Which standard deviation is it? That's what's important. That's the sample standard deviation. So I have to use T score. Now to find that T-score I want to use, what do I need to look it up? We got the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom here would be 80, right? One less than the sample size. So I look at 80. I want a 90% confidence interval. 10%. 10% good. So 0.1 in two tails. Degrees of freedom is 80. So there's 1.664. So it's just a little bit bigger than the z-score I would have used. So 1.664 is my t-score. So the formula really is the same. Um, if it's a z-score, it's this. If it's a t-score, it's this. So really, it's, they're the exact same formula. It's this many standard deviations. So here, the t is how many standard deviations instead of the z. It's still the same location. You still put the number right there. So then I just fill it in. x bar was 39. 39. The t-score we just looked up. Standard deviation is 5.09. And the sample size was 81. The other mistake I get a lot is people put in their 80 because their brain is stuck on degrees of freedom. So be careful. That's N. 81 goes there. Don't put 80 there. See, the 
error here would be Cool. And then you just add it to 39, subtract it from 39. Not 88F, that's good. Yeah, since it's really close, you could say 38 to 40. Just because they're really close to this. So that's the end of chapter 7. The next time, in fact, in the meantime, if you really feel adventurous, look at the back side of that answer sheet I gave you. Look at the little preview of what chapter 8 is going to be about. When I learned chapter 8 stuff, it was 8 steps. I got it down to 5 steps. So try to take a little preview for next time.